What's up guys, Justin here with the RealTimeEssentials.com back with another Unity Materials tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk through the basics of materials inside of Unity. How you can set them up inside of your projects, um, some of the things you need to know in order to create more realistic materials, things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So let's just start off really simple. Let's just add a game object. So I'm just going to add a plane right here and we'll go ahead and set our location to zero and then I'm just going to add a cube so I'm just going to add another object over here it's just going to be a cube and again I'm going to set it to zero 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 and this will be good for right now so we'll bring this up and we're good to go so at the moment notice how these are just being shown as kind of like the default material right it's kind of a whitish grayish material it doesn't really do anything that's because we haven't really given any information as to what the materials on these objects should be so the first thing we want to do is let's create a location in our project assets for those uh, materials to go so let's just come in here right click and let's just create a folder and we're just going to call it materials. That's where we're going to store all of our material files and information for this project. So notice how there's nothing in that right now. We can double click in here and we're just in an empty folder. Well now let's add our first material. So what I want to do is just right click, go to create and select the option for material. And so for this material we'll just call this something simple like red. So I'm just gonna come in here, type in red, and we're good to go. So notice on the right-hand side of the page, there's a lot of information about this material that we can adjust in the inspector. And that's gonna show up whenever we select the object inside of our materials folder. So first off, notice how there's a lot of different options in the dropdown for different kinds of shaders. So those are gonna be things that tell Unity how to display different things inside of your program. So there's options in here for like skyboxes, which can act as a background. There's a lot of different things in here. If you click on them, notice how there's just a bunch of different stuff. For now, we're gonna focus on the standard shader. So that's gonna be the shader that Unity uses most in order to basically generate materials. And so let's take a look at some of our options. So first off, the place where you're pretty much always going to start is going to be your albedo. So your albedo is going to affect how your material looks. So in this case, if we click on this, notice how this is going to bring up this color picker. You can use the color picker in order to set the color of a material. So you can click in here, you can use the eyedropper to select something from the screen, but notice how this material now previews as this red material down below. So notice how that's not affecting anything in our scene though. So at the moment, these are just, if we click on them and we look at our material that's applied to these, these just have the default material in here. But let's say we wanted to apply this material to an object. Well, all you have to do is just drag the material out of your materials folder onto an object on your screen. Well, notice how now this plane shows up as a red plane. So it's basically taking the information from this material and it's applying it to that object. And so notice how if you make an adjustment to this red material, so let's say we made it a little brighter, it's gonna get brighter in our scene. If we make it darker, it's gonna get darker. So this is kind of a live link back to this material file right here. And so let's take a look at some of the other options in here. I don't wanna to get too far down this road. We can talk more about this in the future, but notice how, for example, if I was to drag this metallic to the right, notice how the way that this material is interacting with the light is going to be different. So um, notice how the light is now reflecting off of this as if this was a metal in a way that it wasn't before when your metallic was zero. So usually your metallic is going to be either zero or one. Um, so if something is metal, then you want it to be one. If something isn't metal, you want it to be zero. So smoothness is going to affect how reflective your material is. So if I drag this to the left, notice how less light is reflecting off of this. If I drag this to the right, notice how more light is reflecting off of this. If I turn this to one, notice how this is giving me a really strong reflection of my sun in this material. So usually your smoothness is not going to be set to one. It'll be somewhere in the middle here. Okay, so in addition, notice how we have other options in here for things like normal maps and height maps and other things like that. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. 
Um, so a lot of this is going to have to do with what these are going to look like if you actually apply like a texture file to them. So instead of applying a material in here, we would apply an albedo. And so what the albedo would be is the albedo would be um, an actual file that would make this look like something. But for now, let's start by just creating a simple blue material. So we've got our red material in here. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to create a new material. And we'll call it blue. And actually we'll call it um, we'll call it blue dash reflective. So all we would do to make this a reflective blue is we would just come in here and we would select a blue color like this. And then we would turn our smoothness up. And so what we could do is we could take this reflective blue material and notice how we're getting a preview of that material down here. We would just drag it on top of this object right here. So notice how now you've got a blue material applied to this that's going to reflect things like the sun. And so one thing I do want to note is notice how you can change these on objects. So for example, with our plane right here, if we wanted our plane to be the blue material, all we would have to do is just drag the blue material on top of this. If we wanted our box to be red, we could just drag the red material on top of this. Or if we wanted them both to be red, we could drag the red material on both of them. So notice how you can, inside of the object with that selected, adjust the shader. And so when you do adjust the shader like this, notice how you're adjusting the overall material. So notice how if I adjust the material on the box, the material on the plane is adjusting as well. You're adjusting the red material right here. All right, and so now let's say that we wanted this to be something more than a color. Let's say we wanted this to be, or let's say we wanted to create like a pavement material. So you're not going to create a pavement material just by using a color. You're usually going to create a pavement material by using a texture. And so what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to a website where you can download textures. And so I'm going to a website called polyhaven.com. So this is a repository of free textures that you can download. There's actually other things like models and HDRI images, which we're not going to focus on today, but we're just going to browse in our textures. All right. And so let's bring in this dirty concrete. I think that's going to be a good one. So we'll click on the dirty concrete. One concept that you need to understand when we talk about uh, materials inside of Unity is the idea that we're trying to simulate realistic materials using light. And so basically what that means is that means that the engine needs some information in order to simulate things like the way that things reflect in the real world, other things like that. So if we look at this material and then we click on this little button right here, notice how there's a bunch of what's known as PBR maps. These are basically basically maps that contain information about the way a material is going to act in the real world. So we'll talk more about these in the future, but we're going to want these maps because they're going to make our materials more realistic. And so I'm going to link to a guide that I actually did on my rendering channel, um, but I'll put it up on uh, my real time essentials channel as well that you can download. It'll actually kind of walk you through some of that stuff. So it's a PBR materials guide and it'll tell you what those do. Read through that because it's going to give you a good idea of what these are going to do. And then we'll go ahead and bring these into Unity. And we'll just select the option for GLTF. Um, we'll set this to 2K for right. We're going to go ahead and download this file right here. So we'll download the dirty concrete folder. And then we'll open it up and take a look. You can see how that has a textures folder. And this actually only came in with a diffuse, a normal, and a roughness, which is fine. Uh, it's a little weird because there were other ones listed on here. But let's go ahead and let's do an extra large icons in order to preview this. So basically what this came in with is this thing came in with three maps. So the first one is the diffuse map. Um, this is also going to work as your albedo. Um, that's going to be the map that we're going to load in that's going to basically be our texture image file that's applied to the actual objects inside of your 3D model. So there's also a map in here, which is a normal map that is basically designed to tell this, uh, to tell your 3D engine where things should look bumpy. So if we zoom in on this, notice how there's actually color information that's kind of encoded in a um, red, green, and blue. So basically the colors in here tell the engine how far up 
things should be, which allows it to simulate bumpiness. And then finally, there's a roughness map, which is supposed to tell your engine how much things should be reflected in different areas. So um, let's go ahead and let's bring this into Unity. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna jump back to our scene right here. Let's go ahead and let's create a new material. And we're gonna call this ground-dirty concrete. And let's go ahead and let's apply that to our ground. So notice how right now nothing is happening. So what we wanna do is we wanna load those three maps into our materials over here. And so the way that we wanna do that is we want to start, let's click on this little circle right here, we're gonna bring this in. Well, the problem is at the moment, we haven't actually brought those textures into a folder um, that we can use. So we wanna go back to our assets folder. We wanna create a folder and we wanna call that textures. So that's gonna be where we're gonna keep our information about our various textures. And in this case, I'm just gonna take, we'll just use the diffuse and the normal for right now. I'm just gonna drag this into the textures folder like this. So now these textures are contained inside of our project file. Well now if I was to go back to my ground material, we could click on this button right here and go find that map. So in this case, notice how we can bring the dirty concrete map in here. And this is gonna apply this to our material. So let's just double click on this and let's take a look at what this did. So what this did is this basically came in here and this applied a repeating material to our ground plane. So now instead of our ground plane looking like a color, it actually looks like a material. And notice how we can adjust things like the tiling in here. So this is going to adjust how many times a material repeats inside or on your faces. So um, one thing to note about this is you do need to be a little bit careful. If you notice how if I drag this way to the right, I'm getting a lot of distortion in here. So most of the time you want to you want to adjust your tiling proportionally. So for example, if I want this to be one and a half bigger here, I probably want my Y to be one and a half bigger here. So you can also use your offsets to adjust how this lies on a material inside of Unity. And so what we want to do for right now is in addition to using our albedo, we also want to apply our normal map. So if we click on this right here, this is going to be our normal map. So we want to click in here. We'll notice how when we click on this and load it in, now this concrete material looks a lot more bumpy, right? So this is basically using the information contained inside of that normal map in order to make this surface look bumpy. Now, one thing to note about this though, is you are getting an error in here that this texture is not marked as a normal map. So what we wanna do is inside of our textures, we just wanna select this material and make sure that we set our texture type to normal map like this. And then we wanna click on the button for apply. And so when we apply that, now, if we go back and look at our ground material in here, we're not getting that error anymore. You can also adjust how strong the normal map effect is by adjusting this value right here. So if I type in a value of two, it's very pronounced. If I type in a value of 0.5, it's much less pronounced. And so a lot of this is kind of an artistic decision. So you can use this in order to set how much your material or how much the light is going to reflect off of the bumps of the material. All right, so this should give you a good idea of where to start with materials inside of Unity. Uh, we'll talk about a lot more in the future, but if you wanna download that PBR materials guide, I will link to it in the notes down below. If you have any questions on anything, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to try to help out. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.